Hi everyone, if you're just coming in, welcome. We have some questions up on the screen. If you would like to answer them while you're waiting, we are very curious to hear from you. Um, some thoughts on food waste, why you're here, your relationship with food waste. So if you wanna fill those out while you're waiting for us to get started, we're gonna wait until a couple more people come in today. Looks like people are still filtering in. If you just got here, you'll see some questions up on your screen. We'd love you to fill those out while you're waiting for us to get started. It's just gonna be a couple minutes here until we kick off. So if you want to fill out uh, that short questionnaire, it just asks you why you're here and um, what you currently do with food waste. Um, so we'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, um, I'm gonna have Serena and Jim come on the screen uh, to get ready to get started in just a minute here. Um, Serena is a colleague from Solana Center and Jim from EDCO. Um, what brought you guys here today? What's the main thing you're excited about? Me first? Sure. Sure. Okay, good. Well, I'm excited about talking to just to talk about this topic. Uh, I really have a passion around recycling uh, organics and particular food and, and embracing this challenge that's in front of us. So that's uh, my interest in being here now. We're happy to have you. Thanks for being here, Jim. Pleasure. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm always looking for new ways to learn about diverting food waste. Um, and particularly, I think this is a really interesting um, type of technology. So I'm excited to hear about more of that technological side of the AD facility, for sure. What about you, Jackie? Yeah, totally agree. Um, I've been around backyard composting for a long time now, but I've definitely never seen anything quite on the scale as what EDCA is doing. So I'm very excited about that. Um, if you're just coming in, we are going to get started in just about one minute. I'm um, just waiting for a few more folks to get here. We'd love you to fill out the questionnaire on the screen. It's just a couple questions to get to know you, take a temperature of the room, and uh, we'll get started in just a few moments. Serena, what, uh, what would you answer for number two? What do you do with your food waste? Uh, number two, I usually, I like to try new recipes and try to sub out uh, some food scraps that I have. So I'll try to reuse things like beet greens. Um, and as we talked about a little bit in the last webinar about fighting food waste in our kitchens, I really like trying to do a little kitchen garden with my food scraps. So regrowing green onions, uh, you know, carrot tops, anything like that. It's fun to watch it grow, especially really quickly if you put it in the right window. <laughs> I had the pleasure of adopting Serena's green onions, and I can testify that she's very good at regrowing onions. <laughs> Jim, what about you? Well, uh, having focused on this topic for a while, uh, really became more aware of what we buy and what we reuse and uh, what we need to dispose of. So we've definitely reduced a lot of our food waste uh, just through better shopping and, uh, and better consumption habits for sure. Uh, but those scraps we have left over, uh, they get reused for pets and also <laughs> for uh, compost. Wonderful. Well, uh, let's kick it off. Um, so we'll start with some introductions. My name is Jackie. I am a zero waste lead at Solana Center. And my name is Serena. I'm also a zero waste lead with Jackie at the Solana Center. And I'm Jim Ambroso, general manager for EDCO uh, North San Diego County Operations. And we're very happy to have you here today, Jim. Thank you so much. Pleasure. I'm going to leave the poll open um, just for a while longer. If you want to finish up completing it while we talk, um, we're just going to do a bit of introduction and then we'll dive in to the meat of the webinar. So Serena, do you want to start us off? Yes, definitely. So I'm going to start today with a little bit about us. So Solana Center, we are a nonprofit. We focus mainly on zero waste, composting, water conservation, and many other aspects of sustainable living. And we actually started in 1983 as Solana Recyclers, and we're proud to have pioneered the first curbside recycling program 
here in the region, which was then actually acquired by EDCO, who expanded on it uh, to help the whole region with recycling. So it truly has been our pleasure to work with EDCO right from the origins of Solana Center, which was over 35 years ago. And our partnership with them has continued to flourish over the years. So today we are thrilled to bring this joint webinar uh, featuring EDCO's general manager, Jim Ambroso. And uh, I'll let Jackie share with you some of our, uh, so some of Solana Center's impacts and our reach. Yeah, so just a bit more about Solana Center. If you are new to our programs, we do a huge diversity of work. We work with schools, with community individuals, with businesses, with jurisdictions. We do all kinds of things from teaching classes such as this one or training master composters. We get very hands-on with businesses, helping them divert their waste. We sell uh, composting supplies and rain barrels. We do organic diversion right on site. So we have a huge myriad of programs and uh, we encourage you to check us out if you're not already familiar or if you are um, to get involved with us. We do still have some um, most of our programs open just in a socially distanced way now. Great, and we'll move into some logistics for today. So many of you are probably already familiar and uh, well versed with Zoom, but please use the, the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen, uh, not the chat. If you do have questions throughout the webinar, feel free to put them through that Q&A function. Um, if you have any resources or information you'd like to share with the whole group, you can use the chat box to do so. Just make sure it's to all panelists and attendees. That way everyone can see it. And we hope you don't, but if you do run into any technical issues, please also use the chat function. Just make sure it's addressed to all panelists only. And we'll make sure to have someone try and help you out too. Make sure you can participate and enjoy the webinar. Uh, we will be recording the webinar today. It will be available to all Encinitas residents to view afterwards. And we'll also be sending out a tip sheet as well as some more information about what we're discussing today. So I think now's a good time. We can launch some of the poll results to see what you folks had to say at the beginning of the webinar. Um, it looks like overwhelmingly, a lot of you are super excited about diverting food waste. So that's awesome. Jackie, yeah, do you want to- That's great. Uh, yeah, it looks like we have a lot of composters here, which is very exciting um, because I know like as a composter myself, it's very extra interesting to hear about it done on a larger scale. So um, that's great that there's so many composters, lots of reducers, which we will talk about in a second. Reduction is so important, um, definitely the most important thing in food waste reduction. Um, yeah, so it looks like we've got a good crew here today. I'm going to close up this poll and um, let's get started on food waste. Yes, sounds good. So we will see Jackie and Jim in just a few minutes. And before that, I'm going to dive into a few other things. So let's back up a bit before we talk about organics recycling and talk about food waste. So globally, one third of all food produced is wasted. And in the US, the estimate is even higher and it's around 40% of all food that is going to waste. So that happens at the same time that 42 million Americans are food insecure. And all of this food that never gets eaten costs around $218 billion a year, which for the average US household of four, their food waste translates uh, into an estimated $1,600 in annual losses. So we know it's a big issue and is it happening here in San Diego? Well, it is for sure. So um, if we look here on the right, this is our landfill composition and we can see that almost 40% of all waste that gets to the landfill is organic material, which could be composted. And in Encinitas, we dispose of around 7,500 tons of food scraps every year. And that generates a lot of greenhouse gases, nearly 4,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent per year. So while we, aim less, uh, while we aim to waste less from land to sea, organic diversion is a really large part of that. And it's also a key player in reaching the, the city's climate action plan goals and reducing our greenhouse gases. So although we know that food waste impacts are very significant, the good thing is that there are also many solutions available. So this is the food recovery hierarchy established by the EPA, and this helps guide our priorities for managing excess food and preventing it from being wasted. 
So as you can see, the most preferred option at the top uh, environmentally, socially, and financially is our source reduction. So let's talk about a few ways that we can do that in our own kitchens. So some important tips for reducing food waste at home are by changing your purchasing habits. So you wanna be planning your meals and shopping smart, not over purchasing and practicing proper meal planning and prepping. We wanna use the right storage techniques. This is a big source of uh, food waste. There are tons of resources online for how to store things correctly so they'll stay fresh as long as possible. And we also wanna make sure we're understanding food labels. They often don't indicate food safety, so always remember to use your senses. Um, if in doubt, throw it out, but really our senses can tell us, um, is that food still good to eat? So when these tips don't work, that's when we start to focus more so on diverting the food waste. And we'll be sharing a food waste resource sheet with all of you afterwards. And our webinar we did uh, previously on smart ways to fight food waste will be available to view for any Encinitas residents. So um, into the main, the main highlight of our, of our webinar today, um, we're welcoming Jim Ambroso from Edco. He's worked in the solid waste and recycling industry for over 35 years. And in March of this year, he joined Edco as general manager for their North San Diego County operations. And prior to joining Edco, Jim spent five years developing recycling methods for organic waste, including food waste, which is quickly becoming the, the next frontier in recycling efforts. So he's excited to help area residents and businesses establish sustainable collection and processing programs. And uh, we're thrilled to learn more about the new AD facility that will be launching soon. So welcome, Jim. I will hand it over to you with our first question. So based on your bio, you were already involved with organics recycling before you came to Edco. And I'm curious what drew you to this field. Thanks, Serena, for the opportunity to, uh, to speak here. Uh, and I also want to thank the city of Encinitas for the opportunity to, to uh, uh, do this uh, webinar. Um, what drew me to this uh, started uh, years ago. Um, as I as was mentioned, I spent most of my career in solid waste and recycling. And uh, when we started talking about organics, I saw a, a new opportunity coming. Um, something that I knew would be a big challenge for all of us is to uh, recycle organics. Uh, we're digging into the waste stream in a, in a whole different way than we used to with bottles and cans and, and fiber. And uh, knowing that it would be a big challenge that we'd have to change behaviors, I really wanted to, to dive in and look at technology, look at solutions and figure out what the world's doing uh, to bring, uh, bring uh, to make this happen. And so, um, yeah, I spent five years uh, going around looking at uh, things around the world and, and also uh, studying and, and here we are now with an opportunity to work for Edco, uh, who has uh, already demonstrated they wanna be a leader in this space. Great, well, thank you so much. I'm gonna turn my video off and I'll hand it over to you with your slides. Okay, thank you so much. Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, I'm excited to be here today to uh, share some of these slides and talk about uh, the solution that uh, we're developing. Uh, it's not just Edco, but we're doing it in conjunction with our, our partners, the cities and our business customers that we work with uh, throughout uh, San Diego County. Uh, for those of you who don't know much about Edco, uh, it's a family owned and operated business. It's been around for 50 years. Um, the owners uh, still live here in San Diego County. Uh, we are an integrated waste and recycling company. Uh, we focus significantly on recycling. We don't own any landfills. So our job is to recycle, 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 and uh, extract as much uh, material from the waste stream so that we can avoid landfilling. We service residential commercial customers throughout San Diego County. Uh, many of the cities uh, in the County of San Diego, uh, we have the privilege of providing services to them. Um, we have a very loyal and committed uh, workforce. Uh, our average tenure with the company right now is just uh, under 18 years. Uh, our folks uh, enjoy working for this company and, and I'm privileged to be here as well. So let's uh, dive into these slides. I wanna talk uh, first about why are we now talking about food waste? So next slide uh, gives us some idea on this. In California, uh, we dispose of a lot of organic material. Um, we think of solid waste, uh, we know there's organic material in there, it's food, but there's much, much more. This slide shows that the vast majority of what's in solid waste stream is organic. Uh, the food waste and other organics, which consists mostly of green waste, uh, represents almost 40% of it, as uh, Serena mentioned just a few minutes ago. Um, paper, we've been recycling paper, it's in the waste stream, it's organic. 
uh, and it is being recycled today, and that's great. Uh, the same with wood and lumber through construction re recycling. We do a lot of recovery there, but the pieces that have still been left out there going into landfills as of the last few years have been organic green waste and yard waste and food waste. Uh, and we know that we can, we can utilize this or, or find better ways to use it and get it out of the waste stream. As you know, uh, when we do put organics in the landfills, it does uh, break down uh, and produce methane gas. And methane gas is one of the most potent greenhouse gases uh, that are generated in, uh, on the planet. And, and of course, it's really bad for our environment. It's 25 times more potent than other gases that are emitted. So we know that we have to do something about that. Um, the other issue that's significant in California, and this is probably alarming to many, is that we still have a lot of food insecure people. It's uh, statistically one in eight Californians uh, doesn't have enough food for each day and one in five children. So if we've got excess food, we've been burying it, can we find a way to share it and, uh, and help, um, uh, help provide the, this to those who are insecure uh, and not bury the stuff like we uh, have been doing in the past? Let's go to the next slide. We'll talk about what's been done. Our legislature recognized this was an issue uh, well over five years ago and started focusing on some, some laws to attack uh, this problem of organics going into landfilling. Uh, started with AB 1826, which was the Mandatory Commercial Recy Organics Recycling Program. And this was aimed at the businesses in California to uh, encourage them to uh, find ways to separate food uh, and other organic material. And what organic material are we talking about? It's not just food and green waste as I've mentioned, but textiles and carpets, organic uh, material that, for example, wool are organic compounds that do break down. Wood and lumber we've talked about, paper products, uh, manure. We generate a lot of manure with, uh, from animals in the state of California and it goes into our landfills often. Uh, and biosolids, something that we generate from wastewater treatment goes into landfills. And so the, the challenge was how do we get that out? And can we turn to the business community and ask them to do that? The business community responded fairly well, but unfortunately we don't have a lot of places to take it. Folks uh, admitted they were willing to separate it, but we really didn't know where to take it. We had some compost sites spread out around California, but not nearly enough to handle the amount of organic waste that's generated in the business community. And we weren't even talking about residential at the time. So the, uh, our legislature passed then SB 1383, which is a law focused on uh, a little bit different twist. It wasn't just saying, let's recycle these organics. It said, let's get organics out of the landfill. So it looked at the climate impact of methane production um, and how it impacts our climate. What can we do to remove it from the landfills? And that meant that we all had to start focusing on everything, residential, commercial, uh, organics uh, generated and in, in all across the spectrum. Um, and again, it was focusing on the emissions side of this uh, and, and uh, to reduce the amount of uh, emissions coming out of landfilling. So there were some targets that our legislature set up. And in fact, the first one hit this year uh, back in July. They want us to reduce by the amount of organics we landfilled in California by 50%, uh, we didn't make it. Candidly, as I said earlier, there wasn't enough locations or places to take it. Uh, and that was the biggest challenge. So the regulations actually take effect in 2022. Uh, and the next target now is to try to reduce the amount of organics going to landfills by 75% by 2025. We have a better shot at that one if we can get some more solutions in place. The other thing I want to mention before we move on is the legislature wisely said, look, there's a lot of food out there that can be reused. Let's set up a, 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 a challenge really for our, our communities to set up what they called edible uh, food recovery programs. And, and that's uh, part of this law will require that our cities and all of us work together to find ways to recover food from grocery stores, restaurants that is tended for disposal, but is still humanly consumable and get it and redistribute it to those who have need. Uh, this will require quite a network of capture and uh, deliver, but uh, already there's some really neat uh, things happening with organizations uh, kind of gearing up to do that. So we're pretty excited about where this reg regulation is gonna drive us, but um, the big unknown is what are we gonna do with all this stuff once we collect it? So let's go to the next slide. Next slide takes a look at what the, is in the law and what are the responsibilities. Uh, obviously we have to have collection programs and that's something that EDCO uh, will provide for its communities. Uh, we have to establish the food recovery program I mentioned and the cities are gonna take the lead on that. 
uh, along with uh, organizations like the Solana Center to help uh, identify what it is and where it could be taken. Uh, it's going to require a lot of education and outreach to the community. And when we're working on that diligently to, to come up with ways to uh, inform, educate the why and the how to get this done. There's a procurement uh, component in here, which I'm glad to see. And that's uh, uh, designed to have the cities focus on what can they do to, to purchase the, the byproducts of the recycling activity. And I'll get into this in more detail of the kinds of things that we'll generate with our anaerobic digester and how the cities can actually uh, um, uh, purchase it or require or, or consume it and help us use it to create that demand and close the loop on that uh, recycling. And then there's uh, finding access for edible food recovery and, and also having capacity for um, material. This is something that the cities and, and EDCO will focus on. And lastly, there's a monitoring compliance uh, and also enforcement component of this law. Um, there actually would be a way to issue fines if people don't do this, but that won't start till 2024. And uh, as always, the cities typically try to work with uh, everyone first before we come down with any heavy handed measures. Let's go to the next slide. The digester, uh, because uh, we, EDCO, um, knew that we would need a commercially viable solution, uh, has now built and has nearly completed construction of an anaerobic digester facility in our Escondido uh, property um, here in North County, San Diego. Uh, what you're looking at is a picture of it in front of you. The four tanks that you see is the, the bulk of the, the digester uh, facility. Um, there's a receiving facility, a part of it there, but what we're planning to do is to take commingled organics, which will consist of green waste, uh, collected residentially, commercially, uh, and combine it with food waste and uh, in, inject it into these digesters where it will be uh, broken down and converted into uh, reusable components. And I'll go into that in a little bit more detail here in a second. Let's go to the next slide. Hi, Jim. Before we move on to the next slide, I just want to ask you one quick question. So how did EDCO choose to um, develop this type of anaerobic digester facility over different types of technology that are available? Good question. Um, EDCO, uh, years ago, uh, kind of saw the need to recycle organics. The company, as I mentioned, uh, is not a landfill company. We don't own any landfills. And so we're always looking for ways to recycle more and more of the waste stream. And the owners of the company saw as, as long ago as eight years ago that we need to find a solution for organics. And we knew it was the, one of the biggest components of the waste stream. And so they traveled around the world as like I did uh, and, uh, and found technology that was working in other parts of the world. And anaerobic digestion isn't new. Uh, it's, a, it's a technology that's been used for wastewater treatment uh, for many, many, many years. But uh, to use it specifically in this application um, they found some companies that uh, were doing this and brought this technology here to the U.S. Uh, when I studied uh, and looked at some of these options, uh, I too was focused on anaerobic digestion, largely because it's a technology that um, you can operate no matter what the weather conditions are. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's an enclosed system. So like composting, you know, we, we have to rely uh, hopefully on good weather and um, it works wonderfully, but we need something that's going to manage a lot of material every day uh, for a long period of time. Great, thank you so much. And we're just getting a message from our, uh, our tech support. I think I'm gonna turn your video off. Some folks are having some issues with uh, your video and sound being a little choppy. So everyone will still be able to hear you, but we're gonna shut your video off and I'll move on uh, to the next slide here, okay? Okay, very good. So I mentioned that the facility is nearly completed in construction and we start this uh, just about a year ago in Escondido building the facility. A couple of things I'll point out. Uh, it's, a, it's a very large uh, facility, very large investment. Um, the picture there with, the, um, with these large tanks uh, gives you some perspective. Uh, I think they're 20 or 30, I want to say 20 or 25 feet in, in uh, diameter. Um, the, that slide of March 24th shows you the inside of the tanks. And the way they work is there's a long shaft all the way down the middle of it. It has uh, paddles attached to it now, uh, and it will rotate uh, very slowly, one revolution per minute, to actually mix the green waste and the food waste inside the tanks. The residence time inside here, the material will be in there for a period of, of uh, two to three weeks. And during that time, it'll break down the organic components 
and release gases and create a very nutrient rich uh, digestate, we call it, or uh, fertilizer material. But um, the project has been uh, working well. Then August 31st, 2020, you look at that picture, you can see the gas conditioning um, uh, components. We've installed now uh, the gases that are created or, or generated inside these vessels uh, must be cleaned up, dried up before we can uh, reuse them. Uh, we do inject it into the pipeline and it has to uh, achieve a, a quality that's even better than what's in the pipeline gases. And then uh, we actually then will pull it back out and use it to power our vehicles, our trucks that we drive um, throughout the community. Next slide. This is a little bit of the science. Uh, I won't get into all the details of it, but what happens inside an anaerobic digester? Why does this thing, or how does it work to break down the organic material? Um, as you can see from the top left, uh, we receive the material. Uh, it's mixed green waste and organic food waste. <coughs> Excuse me. We can take just uh, food waste by itself as well. And we will do that commercially from businesses, restaurants, grocery stores, and the like. But uh, we're also going to take the residential green waste and food waste mixed together. Um, it comes into the facility. We actually clean it up. We shred it down and we insert it into the digester. Inside the digester are these anaerobic um, microorganisms. Anaerobic and aerobic are very different. You hear about composting and composting uses uh, aerobic uh, microorganisms to break down the organic material. And that means that they rely on oxygen, oxygen and the organic material to, to produce uh, the byproducts. In this case, uh, anaerobic uh, has no oxygen. We have it in an enclosed tank where there's no um, oxygen present and these micro, microorganisms then uh, flourish with organic material. And what they do is they break down the material into methane gas. Uh, which I've mentioned is we capture that gas, it bubbles to the top and we extract it off. The gas then is um, purified uh, and uh, used to go back into the pipeline as renewable natural gas. Um, this has a carbon ne neutral or carbon negative uh, benefit uh, uh, when we uh, put it into the pipeline and then reuse it to power our trucks. And we own and operate a fleet of near zero vehicles. Uh, today, most of our trucks are converted to natural gas and so we're uh, already using natural gas from the pipeline. Uh, now we'll be able to create our own gas and add to it uh, so that renewable natural gas is being consumed rather than fossil fuel generated uh, natural gas. And the net benefit of this in uh, the bottom right there, as you can see, we greatly reduce the amount of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, to put this in perspective, um, the amount that we hope to generate there will be equivalent to removing 7,000 cars off the road every, every year. So it has a, a big uh, impact there. Uh, and uh, I did my best to explain it, but um, if we can see the video, uh, we have a video that I think goes into this and can do a little better job than I can, and hopefully we can check that out now. Organic waste accounts for over 40% of the material in California's waste stream. Disposing organic waste in landfills is a big problem, and it's not just because of the resources we lose. In heaps of trash, organic waste decomposes and releases methane gas into our atmosphere. Organic waste is available in large quantities all over Southern California. Most of it is in the form of green waste from cities and local communities, garden and kitchen waste from homes, and food waste and scraps from industrial and commercial operations. Mandatory recycling of organic waste is the next step to achieving California's zero waste goals, and EDCO has a sustainable solution to help local jurisdictions comply. EDCO is investing in a state-of-the-art, advanced technology anaerobic digestion facility capable of powering our fleet of trucks with renewable natural gas. EDCO's anaerobic digestion facility will be a foundation for cities to achieve state mandates, including AB 1826, AB 1594, and SB 1383, which are directly related to organic recycling in California. Anaerobic digestion, or AD, is the natural process in which microorganisms break down organic materials, such as food waste, green waste, fats, oils, and greases. Anaerobic digestion happens in closed spaces where there is no air. A fully automated crane system feeds the AD system, which means the facility can operate around the clock, seven days a week. The core of the facility are the digesters, where microorganisms decompose the organic matter in the absence of oxygen. Over the course of approximately three weeks, with steady agitation and an operating temperature of 131 degrees, the biogas is released from the organic material and captured in the system. 
The material that is left after anaerobic digestion happens is called digestate. Digestate is a wet mixture that is separated into solid and liquid fractions. The solid digestate can be used directly in agriculture as a raw organic fertilizer or soil conditioner. Alternatively, it can be further processed into compost. The liquid digestate is also used as organic fertilizer. The raw gas from the digester is upgraded into renewable natural gas in a downstream system and can be fed into the gas grid or further compressed to be used as fuel for our carbon neutral fleet of trucks. Recycling organics will be easy and convenient with EDCO's commingled organics recycling program. EDCO is expanding our source separated green waste collection to include the recycling of food waste. The service will allow customers to toss food scraps in the same container as green waste. Simply put, if it grows, throw it in the green container. Residential kitchen caddies will be offered to allow customers to easily store and carry the organic waste from the kitchen to the green waste cart. These caddies are dishwasher safe and are odor and bug resistant. The Edco Anaerobic Digestion Facility will provide a sustainable end market for Southern California's organic waste, while at the same time producing organic fertilizer and a carbon neutral fuel for the Edco fleet. Since 1967, family owned and operated Edco has had a long standing commitment to innovation and reducing impacts on the environment. Edco's state of the art anaerobic digestion facility will begin serving customers in early 2021 assisting jurisdictions be in full compliance with state mandates and keep us on the road to zero waste. At EDCO, we'll take care of it. All right, thank you. I'll shift uh, the discussion now. Um, you can hear me okay, I hope. Yes, we can hear you good, Jim, thank you. Okay, good. Uh, so that's the, 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 the information that we are uh, on the digester system and the technology and hopefully uh, it, it'll give you some insight as to what we're, what we're building there and the investment we're making. Um, but I'll shift now to, uh, you know, we got the facility, how do we get the material there? And so Edco has been working on uh, a, a commingled organics collection program and have been working with our cities to uh, define it and to decide how to integrate it into our operations, our collection operations that are ongoing today. So when we started looking at residential, uh, we knew right away, we've got to keep this simple. We've got to help um, residents, um, number one, understand why we're doing this and two, see how simple it is and help change some behaviors. You know, when we did curbside recycling of bottles, cans and paper and fiber, uh, we did that at the curb. We all learned over the last 20 plus years how to separate it and do a good job of putting it at the curb. But now we're coming into the house. Now we're coming into the kitchen and we're asking residents to change the way they cook, uh, the way they, they uh, uh, dispose of things that they cook and prepare. And so uh, we knew that we had to uh, make, keep it simple. Uh, we didn't want to add another truck uh, and extra containers necessarily where folks would struggle to have room. So we decided to incorporate the food waste into the green waste containers, which most every resident has today. Um, so we, we built a commingled system of green waste and food waste. Um, it's, uh, we want to keep this easy. So we've come up with some methods inside the kitchen on how people can separate the food and get it into the green waste cart. There's no magic to this. I want you to know that. Um, and what we offer by way of a kitchen caddy or container here is just one of many methods. We know a lot of composters, folks that are probably listening here have already figured out the best way that works in your kitchen. Great, keep using it. Um, but the goal is to convince our residents at large and our businesses to separate the food, food waste from the trash. It is so easy to just take everything and put it in one trash can and take that plastic bag out to the, to the garbage cart, right? Um, but that's what we got to change. We've got to get people to think a little bit about it and say, wait a minute, this is a food scrap. This is, this is something that's digestible. Um, I can put that in a separate container instead of uh, in the trash can. And we've got to find a way to convince them to do this. And uh, I've had an interesting experience personally, and uh, I know many of you have stories and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But the whole idea is, is, is key is how do we help people do this easily, simply, separate the stuff and get it into the green waste container. I'll share a couple of these ideas that we have and that we're, we're, we're promoting out there. If you can go to the next slide. Uh, one is the kitchen caddy, which we've talked about. 
Um, it's a it's a simple plastic container that we're offering to our, our customers. Um, it uh, can be put inside of a kitchen cabinet. Uh, me personally, we put it right on the counter, uh, open it, and I just open it up when my uh, we're, my wife and I are preparing meals. Uh, we throw the scraps in there, and when we're done, we set it back down on, on the floor next to our trash can. So it's out of the way. Um, it seals up very nicely. It doesn't uh, allow odors to come out. There's no insects can get in. But uh, it's very simple to take out to the um, to the green waste container and empty it there and combine it with our green waste uh, and yard waste scraps. Um, and it's easily washable. It can go into a dishwasher. Uh, I wash mine in my sink. It's it's quite easy to do. So uh, you may have, like I said, your other ways of other containers, buckets, Tupperware containers, things like that are all fine. Let's go to the next slide to look at another method for doing this. <clears throat> You've all heard probably of uh, the idea of wrap the scrap. Um, we're, if, if the material doesn't fit in the, in the caddy or your, your bucket, you can easily lay down some craft paper, um, newspaper, paper towels, uh, anything that's not waxed or, or, or lined with any plastic film. It works wonderfully. My wife and I get a lot of Amazon deliveries uh, in those boxes. They stuff a lot of paper in there. It's perfect for laying out and you can put your scraps right on there, roll it up into a burrito and take that burrito out to the uh, green waste cart and put it there. Uh, others have said they found it works well to, to put it in a container like a coffee can, freeze it in the freezer, take it out. There's no orders, nothing to worry about there. Um, empty the coffee can in the green waste cart. We don't want that in there. Uh, but there's, again, other, other ways and methods that you probably have come up with. And again, we're going to offer uh, ideas uh, and suggestions, but you can develop your own solution. The one thing I will caution, and uh, we're, we'll get into this next slide as well, is plastics are, are no good. Uh, we don't want plastics uh, incorporated or plastic bags used inside the caddy or your buckets and then toss the bag in with the food scraps in the green waste. Uh, any plastic bags are the devil. I'll keep saying that. Um, and for us to, uh, we, if you put them in there, we're going to have to pull them out. <clears throat> That's a big job. So uh, we really encourage people to keep plastic bags out as well as to avoid using any wax paper, wax cardboard, um, or anything that has a plastic film on it. Excuse me. <clears throat> Next slide. So what goes into the green waste cart? What can we separate? What kind of organic food waste can we include? And, and as you heard on the video, it said, if it grows, it goes. Um, clearly anything that grows uh, will be fine. We can also take other materials like meat, bones. Um, we can take uh, any kind of pastas, uh, coffee grounds, dairy products are fine. Uh, included paper napkins and paper towels, things that are soiled uh, in the, and when you're preparing foods and if you wipe up a spill or anything like that, uh, provided it's not waxed or um, uh, has any plastic film on it, you can put that in there too. Uh, coffee filters are fine. Um, so all these things will break down nicely together uh, in the, in the, uh, in the uh, digester. Hi, Jim. We get one really common question, which is about compostable containers. So a lot of backyard composting um, can't process those. Will, will compostable containers be something that people can put into their green waste bin, or is, should that also be um, kept out? Unfortunately, that has to be kept out as well. Uh, we have done some work and experiments on digesting these compostable bags and, and utensils. And unfortunately, while they do break down over time, we don't have enough time in the digester to do that. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the, the cycle time is two to three weeks. And often we found by experimenting, it'll take closer to six months for a lot of that to break down properly. So uh, as, as great as it would be to use compostable bags or uh, utensils, uh, we have to ask that you keep those out. Okay, great. And just a reminder to everybody, please put any questions you have through the Q&A function. We'll get to those uh, shortly. I'll hand it back to you, Jim. Thanks. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. So obviously, uh, as I said earlier, we got to change behavior. We've got a lot of work to do. Uh, the educational process and the outreach is going to be a really, really important component of our program. Uh, so we are planning uh, to do six to eight week um, um, educational campaign. Uh, Solana Center is going to be working with us in the city of Encinitas to do a good job there. Uh, it'll be through traditional means of mailers, uh, but also a lot of social media stuff through websites, next door, 
uh, Facebook. We're going to be uh, using as many tools as we can to get the word out. There's a lot of videos that will be developed and available for folks to check in on. For example, how do I wrap the scrap? Uh, what can I include? What can't I include? We're hoping to have a number of these videos all available on the website so that folks can check in and see or get ideas if need be. Uh, but it'd be a very, very important piece to explain the why as well as the how and, uh, and, and then show people that it's really not that difficult to do. Uh, next slide. So specifically with the city of Encinitas, uh, we are rolling out a program there. Um, they are still in the process of uh, putting the final planning together on it. But uh, as we're looking right now, it would start April 1st. That's what we're aiming for. Um, to do that, we've got to start the educational campaign already in February. So early next year, there will be some details rolling forward in the city as to, uh, uh, again, the why, the how, uh, how to order caddies and get those delivered. Those will be uh, taking place in March. Um, but the, uh, the outreach and the activities will be fairly extensive and broad. Uh, and uh, we hope to touch, uh, we could touch as many organizations as we can. Uh, COVID unfortunately has hampered some of that activity because normally we would be doing workshops throughout the community. Uh, some of the um, um, uh, oh, different uh, um, street events, uh, we would be set up uh, with tables and booths and explaining this in more detail. But we're confident that through uh, social media, uh, and uh, the, the mailers and things that we put in folks' uh, hands should be adequate to get it done. And this is something that'll be ongoing. We're gonna have to continue to educate and motivate people to do this. Um, one thing that will be included is we will be monitoring uh, the compliance, monitoring participation, monitoring contamination, and those kinds of things then will help us uh, target uh, additional education and outreach activities so that we can uh, improve the, the diversion over time. Uh, and uh, as well as, um, you know, there is, I mentioned earlier, there can be enforcement to help us. We hope that folks will embrace this and do it uh, without requiring enforcement down the road. Um, but we will have to measure, monitor, and then tailor a lot of the additional outreach and educational efforts in that direction. Um, I think uh, the next one is our question. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, presented a lot of information, and I'd, I'd rather try to answer questions if we can. Yeah, great. Let's dive into some questions. It looks like we have quite a few. Serena, you want to get us started on our first one? Yes, definitely. So um, like Jackie said, we had a lot of great questions come through. The first question, um, someone is asking about keeping things like pests, rats, raccoons, possums, and all that out of your bin. Um, is, is using something like a tightly sealed bucket encouraged in order to um, prevent those pests from getting into the waste bin? So the pests, um, you know, uh, are an issue that we've thought a lot about. Um, inside the home, you know, the buckets, uh, the, the caddies are great uh, for taking things out to the green waste cart. But once it's in the cart, people have said, well, gosh, uh, animals could get in there. Those lids on those carts are quite heavy, um, heavy enough that they do prevent animals from typically getting in there. Uh, if you've got a really aggressive uh, raccoon that can open up a lid of a, a cart, waste cart, um, it's, a, it's a big raccoon. Um, but I think in general, there we really have not seen any issues like that. I've been doing this uh, for a while, incorporating it into the green waste, and it's uh, it, we've not had any issues at all with animals uh, getting in there. Great, wonderful. Let's go to the next question, Serena. Yes, yeah, so the next question. You spoke to it a little bit about the bags being uh, any plastic bags being a big contaminant and not to use those. Someone is asking about certified compostable um, items such as bags or other, um, other compostable items? So um, when it comes to anything that is made of a plastic or uh, even some of the uh, um, food-based resins uh, material that you know, does break down quicker, if it has a plastic component at all, uh, we're asking folks not to include that now until we can get some better research done on it and show that it can go through the system in the time frame we're, we're processing. Uh, we'd love to do it. We'd love to have compostable uh, components in there, but unfortunately with the digestion process of being um, two to three weeks, it's just, it's going to end up in our digestate and then we won't have uh, a usable material to, uh, to put back on the land. Great. Yeah. And I think there are, um, there are a lot of other questions about 
contaminants and such, are there any other major contaminants that you're worried about besides um, these compostable materials and then the plastic bags? So there's, um, you know, it was mentioned on the video that we can take um, um, oils, uh, for example, the um, fats oil and grease. And uh, I want to be real clear that what has uh, been talked about there is, is uh, food grade oils and fats and grease, not uh, motor oil. Um, and uh, really, just to be candid, we're going to ask folks not to include any fats, oil, and grease in the, uh, in the, 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 the waste stream, uh, purely because of that worry that if uh, someone makes a mistake and says, oh, they can take oil and put motor oil in here, it would have a very devastating effect on the digester microorganisms. So. Uh, just to be safe, we're going to encourage to keep those kinds of things out as well as the plastics. Great. So if there's oily food, that's okay. You're just talking about having not having people pour containers of oil in there. That's correct. That's correct. You know, and a container of oil probably has to be contained in a, a jug or something. And now you're talking about incorporating maybe a plastic jug or something into there, and we don't want plastic at all. But yeah, if you've got oily you know, waste stream, um, let's say it's bacon or, you know, um, you know whatever you cook with and it, and it has oil, it's okay. Oil is actually great for the microorganisms. Uh, that is food grade oil is great for it. Uh, it's great. like a monster drink to these guys and they, they will go to town. Yeah, that's very different than backyard composting. So I think that's a really important distinction to note. And um, Serena, what's next? So I'm going to combine uh, two questions. The first part being, what will the facility do with some of these contaminants that come through? And the second part being, uh, what will the enforcement process be for this problem? Okay, good questions. So uh, if, if residentially, I'll, I'll separate it in residential commercial, but residentially, if there's any contaminants in the stream, we have to remove that. Uh, so we do take a look at the material when it's brought in and dumped on the floor. We run it over a belt and we have folks that are pulling out any plastics that there might be in there or other contaminants that we can't take before it gets incorporated into the digester. On the commercial side, we do have the ability to separate food and packaging. And what I mean by that is we knew that we'd get a lot of material from the grocery stores, um, even from the restaurants and places that have packaged food that's expired um, it's still in a container. It could be in a steel container, it could be in a plastic container, it could be in just wrapped. Um, we have a, a machine that we're installing that will take that commercial food and actually separate the food from the packaging and we'll have a very clean material of food to inject in with the green waste. Perfect, thank you. What's next, Serena? Someone is asking if the renewable uh, natural gas that is generated if that will only be used for the EDCO fleet or will it also be used um, for other RNG vehicles or available? It'll, it'll be primarily used for the EDCO fleet, but uh, we do have um, one uh, public uh, natural gas dispenser facility that's in operation today. And we'll be installing, I think, another one in uh, probably the Escondido facility. So right now we're looking at um, it, making that available to the public in the future. Great. It looks like we're getting a ton of questions, which is very exciting. We'll probably do another five minutes of Q&A. And then if there's anything really pressing we don't get to, you can always reach out to us. Um, but let's go to the next question. Great. So while we're talking about uh, some of the outputs like renewable natural gas, um, someone is wondering where the digestate will go. So the digestate is something that is, as uh, we mentioned, has a lot of very good nutrient value to it, uh, both in the liquid form and in a solid form. Uh, we have been working with local farming community and the, uh, the local, uh, um, I forget the name right now, but the farming community and the associations there to uh, bring the material out to local farmers and have it incorporated into our fields. Uh, we love the idea of closing the loop locally and uh, keeping organic material going back into the there and, and, and keeping these nutrients uh, protected and, and used. Yeah, that's wonderful. Can't wait to hear more about that as it progresses. Do you know what's our next question? So next, uh, for folks who have more than one green waste can currently, once the organic uh, waste pickup rolls out, will there be restrictions on how many cans, how many green waste cans they have? So they can, uh, most of our communities uh, are set up where the green waste cans, um, uh, they can have up to three 
cans free as part of our service or part of our bundled package. Um, and they can incorporate the food in there. What they'll find is that they really won't need to add additional green waste uh, carts because they're putting food in there necessarily. And it may happen to somebody. And if they do, we can provide additional carts for them. But in most cases, uh, you can incorporate the food and mix it with green waste and it won't increase your volume overall. It'll increase the weight, but not necessarily the volume. And that's because there's a lot of cracks and voids in the green waste uh, stream. Yeah, it's a lot heavier. Um, on that note, can you tell us a little bit about the timeline of getting those green carts out to folks that might not have them yet? The, uh, in, in most of our communities, they have green waste carts uh, delivered already. Um, okay. Over the last several years, we've delivered them and most residents have green waste carts. Uh, uh, anybody even commercially that has a green waste service has a bin or carts available right now. So uh, delivery of carts, uh, we can offer more, but if folks want them, they can request them online or call us, uh, but they should have the carts and this will really, um, be a fairly simple adaptation of uh, when we when the program starts of having folks separate the food and incorporate it into the green waste containers. Got it, great. Um, let's go to the next question. Great, so I'm gonna ask a two part question again. So the first part being uh, someone is worried about flies and insects and things like that. So how frequently will the residential pickup be for the green waste? And the second part being, um, what about multifamily residences? Uh, who don't have green waste cans now? Will, they, will this program be rolled out to them? Yeah. So the frequency of collection will be as, as it is right now, once a week, residentially. Um, so that's the good news is that you will find that um, incorporating food into a green waste bin does not uh, stay there long enough to, to draw flies. Uh, you may get some, in the really hottest part of the summer, you may get a few more flies or gnats, but I've been doing this with, at home with our food waste and it's not uh, causing any kind of uh, additional flies that I can see. Um, so I don't think that's gonna be an issue and if it's taken out weekly, it really doesn't have time for uh, a community of flies to, to grow there. Um, with respect to multifamily, they will be part of the second phase that we were calling it, or we're offering this to first single family residents, uh, but the multifamily will require additional carts or bins uh, if you think of our commercial bins that are two cubic yards or three cubic yards in size, um, the issue we have there is that, and the same with businesses, businesses will get this service as well, but it's going to take longer. And the reason for that is that we've got to actually do site visits and see where we can uh, uh, fit these additional containers. Because in their case, they'll need an extra cart or bin. And a lot of enclosures that are behind a restaurant or behind a strip mall, um, they're designed for trash and recycling, but we didn't design them for organics too. And so we have to figure out a way to incorporate carts or bins uh, and set them up. And the same with multifamily. Multifamily have enclosures in most cases. We've got to help them figure out what container works best for them. Once we do, we intend to give those residents uh, caddies or cart or for their kitchens so that they can bring the material out to the community bin or the community cart uh, in, uh, in a multifamily uh, location. Great. Ah, uh, yeah, it's gonna be quite a process to get every aspect of our community on board, but you're working hard at it. Thank you. Um, Serena, let's do like two more questions. Great, so we had some questions about contaminants. So are liquids like soap, sauces, and salad dressings able to be included? And how about parchment paper, which has a silicone coating? Well, the, the first items you mentioned, uh, yes, we could take those, uh, any of those dressings and uh, um, are fine. Um, as far as parchment paper, if it's uh, if it a silicone on it, I'm not sure about that one. Um, I wish I knew more uh, whether that would be something that could break down. If it's, uh, if the parchment paper has wax coating, uh, that would be a no-no uh, or any kind of plastic film. But silicone, uh, I'm not sure how that breaks down. I'm sorry, I can't answer that. Jim, what about um, paper? So food soiled paper is good in the bin. What about paper that has um, some kind of cleaning product on it? Are you concerned at all about bleaches or anything? For the most part, I'd say, no, we're not concerned about that. Um, you know, when you look at the scale of what we're taking in 
uh, something like that would probably be okay. Uh, if it's if it's bleach, uh, you know, maybe better to dispose of that rather than risk uh, damaging the you know any of the bacteria or the microorganisms. But um, a lot of it, if it's in there, uh, is going to be mixed with you know uh, nearly a hundred thousand tons a year of material that's going to be processed through there. So uh, it'll break down probably and and uh, be diluted to it. Uh, to a degree that it wouldn't have any impact. Okay, good to know. Um, what's our last question, Serena? I think we'll take this last one. Someone is asking what cities and communities will be participating in EDCO's rollout of this facility. So uh, the initial phase of this is the digesters are designed uh, for four tanks and we are constructing just two of them right now. Uh, we'll have capacity, as I mentioned, for uh, over 95,000 tons per year of uh, green waste and food waste. That is enough capacity to service the 12 cities that EDCO services in the county today. Um, we have the ability to add the additional tanks, and we probably will be adding those as uh, other communities uh, take interest in this. Um, but uh, we are designing them for our cities uh, initially, and uh, additional ones would have to be added later. Great. Thank you so much, Jim, for answering all of our many questions. Um, if your question did not get answered, we encourage you to write in and um, we can try to get it answered for you. We might also maybe have time at the end of this. We'll see. Um, I do have a couple concluding thoughts for everyone. Um, so Wrapping up here, I do want to mention that um, composting at home, like many of you already do, is still a great option. Um, there is so much food waste, uh, yard waste, food waste, organic waste in general in this county that there's definitely no shortage. So you don't need to feel that because EDCO is collecting, you should stop composting at home. It's a wonderful resource to have for your garden. Um, and always the more local something happens, the better. So you can't get more local than your own home. If you are interested um, in learning more about composting, that is something Solana Center does, which I mentioned in the beginning, we teach composting classes. We provide composting resources. So you're welcome to reach out to us for more composting information. Next slide. And then another thing I wanna mention is that we do have a food cycle program that takes food waste from the community that will still be running. Like I said, tons of food waste to deal with. So this isn't a uh, one solution, one trick pony. Um, we have a special promotion coming up that is our holiday promotion. Not only um, can you get started on diverting your food waste now and not have to wait until um, next year, but also around the holidays about uh, three times as much food waste as the rest of the year is produced just between Thanksgiving and New Year's. So that's a lot of food waste. If you're not already diverting your food waste, I encourage you to give our holiday uh, promotion a try. It's just a one-time um, payment for a single bucket uh, full of waste that we compost at Solana Center. And then lastly, I wanna uh, wrap up with the next slide. Uh, which is um, our main takeaways. So reminding you again that um, we're very excited to have um, this anaerobic digester coming to our city. Um, it's gonna be a very valuable resource to divert all this waste, decrease landfill growth and produce this renewable gas as well as um, valuable resources. So we hope that everyone can um, Everyone is eager to be a good participant in that. And also want to remind you that the most important thing is to reduce first. So like we said in the beginning, um, it's great that we have a solution to divert, but that doesn't mean we should just be wasting uh, willy nilly. We still want to try to reduce the amount of food waste we have. And then if we can't, then make sure that it gets diverted to be put to a better purpose than landfill. Jim, are there any last takeaways you want to share with the group today? Yeah, I do. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, putting this together. I think you guys are doing a great job of uh, reinforcing the need uh, to reduce the amount of uh, food waste we generate to offer outlets like composting 
uh, that you do. Uh, and uh, this is great because what we have to do is we have to change the way we manage our food waste uh, and organics and get it out of the landfill, as we said. Um, at first, it sounds like a, a daunting task. And when we go to the community at large, uh, there will be a lot of folks who will say, that's too much work. That's too difficult. And I want to encourage you all to encourage them uh, to give it a try and do this. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. I, I, um, when I joined Edco, I took my kitchen caddy home and I uh, put it on the kitchen counter for my wife and I to uh, recycle our food waste. And when she looked at it, she said, I'm not going to do that. Um, and I said, honey, that's not an answer uh, that I can accept right now. We have to do this. We have to figure it out. I said, I'm not going to get in front of people uh, later on and tell them to do this when we're not doing it. So we need to understand it. We need to figure it out. And so we plowed into it. And after two weeks, uh, she admitted to me, she said, you know, this is way simpler than I thought it would be. And I really like doing it. So if my wife and I can pull this off, I know that you can too. Um, it is a great thing to do. Uh, we're at a, a really, a really neat part of, and time, I should say, where we get the, the opportunity to, to show people and to, and to demonstrate and to provide means to get food out of the landfill. And um, we can do it. So I encourage you all to participate and, and uh, help us out. Yes, it's an inspiring testimonial. I hope everyone is excited to participate. I wanna give a big thank you to everyone who showed up for today's webinar and um, an especially big thank you to the city of Encinitas for not only sponsoring this webinar, but sponsoring our um, green, greening your community campaign, zero waste campaign um, that's going on right now. And also just a big shout out to all the work that they do. Um, they are really committed to having a green community and being at the forefront of environmentalism. So we are very happy to be a part of the Encinitas community. Thank you everyone so much for being here. Um, you can contact us with more questions and I'm going to launch a survey. If you wouldn't mind filling that out really quick before you leave, we would really appreciate your feedback. Um, it just gives us some feedback on the webinar. And also I wanna point out um, a question at the end. As Jim said, this is going to be a very big effort to get the whole community on involved uh, in this program being good participants that are diverting properly and responsibly. Um, so if you are interested in getting more involved with that out, outreach effort, um, there's a question at the end that asks um, if you would like to receive information about being a steward in your community. Um, no commitment at this time, just if you're interested in learning more about that, we'd love to have everyone on this webinar be as involved as possible. Um, so that is it for me. Any other concluding thoughts from you two? Oh, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much for being here, Jim. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jim, and thank you everyone for attending. If you'd like to view the webinar, uh, we like we said, we did record it. Um, so if you're an Encinitas resident, we're happy to share that with you. And we'll be sharing some other resource sheets um, and such with the information from today as well. So have a great day and thank you so much. Yep, and I'll be leaving that survey open for a few minutes longer if you would, um, if you would please fill it out for us. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye.